Hello everybody, welcome back to Altrius Plays Sky Vault. This is Sky Vault, I'm Altrius, and today I think I really want to get on board with that iron farm that I said we should put, where am I facing? Over there. Why? Because we need iron. We're going to need a lot of iron, and I don't want to keep going into vaults just to dig up a few pieces of iron each time, and it's, it's, it's not working. We need to make it happen automatically, it needs to be happening while I'm doing other stuff. Also snow. I'm not sure how to do snow. This might be a thing I have to keep Going back to, uh, I suppose I could make a snow golem, to be fair. So let's think about that as well. We'll find some spaces for these things to happen. And also still got an inventory full of stuff. I've got, um, oh, I realised, by the way, after last episode, I said, um, actually, I cut this out. I was going to say I needed a, a name tag to name my villages. But it turns out you can just name them directly on the anvil. <laughs> so I call this one Adam. I'm going to call this one Eve. Um, just so that we know which two villages are the ones that we've created all the other ones from. It's probably not strictly necessary anymore, but let's do it. And the reason I want to do that is when I was messing around with that farm over there, I wanted to know which villager had actually been fed, basically. I wanted to know which ones were going to be full of food already, and therefore when I try to... Where are you? What are you doing there? When I try to make another farm that requires a hungry villager, I know which ones I've given food to. Anyway, let's start some building. First of all, I'm going to research how an iron farm works. I'll try and put it over here if I can. I'm aware, though, that the golem needs to be restricted in where it can spawn. And I think that contradicts the requirements for a baby to spawn, i.e. there needs to be three blocks over there. But if there are three blocks... and a golem might spawn on the beds? I guess we'll find out. And if not, I can always just take a villager or two to somewhere else and do it there. But anyway, let's get cracking on that. And also I need to build this bridge. <laughs> Keep walking along this little pole that I made. This is going to be fantastic. Uh, and it is currently lame. So let's get cracking. This bloke took all of my emeralds, and I went mining for more, and I sold a bunch more, and he took all of my emeralds to get to level 3, and did he give me a name tag? No. Glass. I can make glass. I don't need glass. I can make glass. We're going to have to keep trying to get these losers up to... Oh, your apprentice, actually. Up to, you know, journeyman level, and hope that they will generate the trade for a name tag so that I can create a zombie that doesn't despawn. Here we go. Alright, just a few more emeralds then, which I can get from this bloke when the farm gets into gear. Or I can go mining for them. Or something. And I can get a name tag. Brilliant. No, it's not very fast. We can also sell the paper. I think I've already done as much paper as I had. But we are essentially growing it. I can automate this as well. We should think about doing that at some point. Anyway, we're kind of almost there. We just need a zombie to spawn. I'm going to try a build for the iron farm that I've just seen on YouTube. It's five villagers, five beds, and... That's it. No zombie. If we need a zombie, we've got at least our... Well, we haven't bought the thing yet. We've got the opportunity to buy the thing, so that's there. Five villagers, five beds. I can manage that. I think what I'm going to do is build it separately from this. But I would like to sort of combine it as one. But again, I think, like I was saying before, the fact that the iron golem could spawn on there means that I would have to cover up a lot of this. I don't want to. I like it being open, although... Please note, I am aware that if there's a thunderstorm and a villager gets zapped by lightning, they will turn into a witch, which is also a problem over there. And I think this one was getting attacked by a phantom as well. So I should put a lid on that, <laughs> but I can't be bothered. So uh, let's try this build. It's a very simple build, and if we like the way it works, no diggity, then I can decorate it. And if it doesn't work, or if I don't like the way it works, I can bring it down. It does, of course, involve lava, so I can't build it out of wood. I'm going to have to use stone. 
with plenty of that. So yeah, here it goes, and we'll see if it works. So this is what the guide says to do. The only thing we haven't done, of course, is put any villagers in there. Once there are five villagers down there, that was five beds, five villagers, eventually. When we've got five villagers in here, golems will start spawning. Apparently it requires a day and a night to pass. We should get golems up there. Um, I was going to put a chest down here to collect things, but I can have a sort of a stack more poppers that bring the iron down for now one chest will do once we start getting way more iron that'll be a lot easier right so here's adam and eve yeah you can't get out um I've made one more so the thing is you have to keep taking <laughs> taking the baby away to make another one um and yeah we'll see if this works i suppose coming with the update there is a skill reset, so we get to pick everything again, which is great because literally just at the end of the last episode, I spent a skill point to show you. Um, but also we've got this new thing, expertise points. So there's a tab on here which we never really looked at because it wasn't very interesting. It was a an alignment thing. You could change your character class, basically. That's been removed. It's been replaced with expertise. We have two unspent expertise points. One for each five levels. We're level 11, so we've got two. One at level 5, one at level 10, and they allow you to pick these. Some of these are things that you may have previously recognised if you've played uh, that were on some of the abilities. For example, Fortune. Fortune was on Vein Miner. Is it still on Vein Miner? Finesse and Void Break, so no. Uh, finesse is uh, durability damage, and Void removes crappy uh, things that you mine inside a vault that you don't need, so it just keeps the ore. Fortune is here now, and you also get experience, which can, you know, increase the value of orbs, things like that. So some of the things that you see here used to be here and here. We get two points to pick from. Crafting potential is something that we've not talked about yet. Right, so this one is also something we haven't mentioned. I think it was my very first vault crystal in this world was a lucky one. Basically, when you put the bear crystal on the altar, there's a chance that it's really, really cheap. That's a lucky one. And this will apparently just increase... Uh, lowering the cost of the crystal by 90%. Basically. So it's 10% chance that any of your crystals have got that on them. Experience, that's pretty interesting. That could be good, because the next thing we're going to do is craft the Vault Enchanter. And it's going to cost a lot of experience, so of course 500% experience buff seems really good. Let's learn this once, and this one. I honestly really don't know how to pick these. This Unbreakable could have been good as well, but I don't know. Uh, and then we've got 11 skill points. So this has changed a little bit as well. I think I'm still going to go uh, for a point in haste. Point and strength. Let's go back to these. We want very minor for sure. We want well, go back to that. Definitely want that. 
Definitely want heal. What else have we got? Empower. That's interesting. Four mana per second. Slowing down mobs instead of the Nova Frost, which I was using before. And then this is cool as well. I saw Iskal using this on his videos. You should check that out. Um, it just fires a javelin, but I don't know what button to put it on, so I'm not going to use it. <laughs> I'll think about that. Deals an amount of damage based on your weapon. Knocks mobs away on impact. And then you can... So there's piercing. the scatter. Scatters an amount of javelins on impact, bouncing several times. So this has no knockback? Is that right? Yeah. Scans the area on impact, revealing chests and mobs. Let's learn it. It seems really cool. I think I'm going to upgrade my strength rather than taking another level in dash. Dash is only really good for certain situations. It's, it's great, don't get me wrong, but I'm not using it that much. Mostly for the Elytra. And then... What the heck? Inventory HUD Plus. I don't know what it is. <laughs> what's, what's it for? Let's try it. Wash. <laughs> what? It's crazy. It's amazing. The cooldown is really quick as well. Let's look at the Vault Enchanter, which is very cheap compared to the stuff that we have. We've got plenty of Chromatic Iron. We have got an enchanting table, we've got that stuff too. So this is new in this update, and it's very simple. You put a thing in it, and you can just pick what goes on it. How cool is that? Uh, so this is going to cost me five emeralds and an XP level. That's unbreaker three. Um, let's take, for example, this. We wanted, um, you know, unbreaking silk touch, etc. This has got fortune on it. If you were to re take silk touch now, it would replace fortune with silk touch. But look, we can just put whatever we want on and that is considered remember it was 35 levels to put enough silk touch on this thing not anymore so that's really handy but this is why i said we were going to need a bunch of emeralds we're going to need a way of getting emeralds so these chaps up here are almost redundant but for the fact that they buy things from them so not much <laughs> not many things you don't buy anything you're rubbish you don't buy anything you don't buy anything. You buy paper and squid ink, which is nice. And then, right, so we can we've got a supply of emeralds. That's the important thing. And I made my vault crystal. Should we should we just do the vault now? Oh, you get a quest book as well. I forgot to mention this. So if you have made a new map, you can go through the quest book, and you get rewards for stuff, which is great because it sort of gives you a few extra look, ten free emeralds, etc. I might go through these and sort of claim them. It's really handy, especially in the Skyblock world, to be given that extra boost of materials. <laughs> That's what we need, materials. So, let me put some stuff away, and then we can go and do our vault that we paid so much to be in. I need to find some boots. The other thing I'm looking for is more carbon. So I'm going to need more steel, because I want to improve my backpacks. Right, we have monolith vault. Shouldn't be too hard, but we do need to remember our way out if we're going to be in a monolith vault. Have you noticed how there's a new thing at the bottom telling us... Oh, I haven't got an electro equipped. <laughs> telling us our durabilities of everything down there. Oh, also, new update, update. Oh, this really die quick. <laughs> Brilliant. Um... All spawners are fizzle spawners now, except in dungeons. How cool is that? All of them. Uh, I saw <laughs> I'm so powerful <laughs> that I can just punch them to death. Okay, fine. I guess we'll be doing that. I'm 
honestly. I don't need a sword, apparently. <laughs> What's all that about, then? Minor zombie. Cool new mobs. First room, resounding success. Apart from the fact that my sword broke immediately. I knew I should have taken another one in with me, but I thought it had a lot more in it than that, to be fair. Is this just a special room? Oh, yes. Got a living chest. Ah, just remembered that I learned something. I was talking about the option of putting coin affinity on stuff. On... on uh, tools that don't normally, that don't have picking, basically. And it turns out you can do it with a s sickle. I believe a sickle is the, the right type. Um, that's what this card did, so I'm going to assume it's, it works. Um, so yeah, you don't have to use a pick, because sides do not have picking. Dude. Shot. No! This type of crap. Oh, oh nice. he's nice there. Watch out. No! Oh, you got me. This is where I wish I had a sword. <laughs> so much for walking through. So you can walk through the factory room, but you can't walk through this room. Can't walk through that room unscathed. Still, maybe I can find a sword. <laughs> Luckily, all of the spawners are fizzle spawners. Let's fight them in this room. Then we won't keep there. Is this a. Here's an end one. I think there was a monolith in the room. Whoops! Ah! Get out of it. There's a monolith right there. Look. Now I can just take as long as I like over that room. I like fish in a barrel. in motion because I'm walking on the road. <laughs> that's brilliant. Oh, that was a big vault. Did we get much carbon? That's the question. Because there was a lot of living chests. There was a mega room for living chests and then a challenge room for golden chests, gilded chests. So that doesn't really speak to me about... Uh, not much too much HP. Huh? XP. That doesn't really say to me... Um, I had a sugar box. Doesn't say to me that we're going to have got a load of carbon. This one has 44 crafting potential. So if we put this in here, and we can guarantee. Shocking. Let's do that. Why not? This. Ah, that's the suffix. Okay, that's fine. Um, now it's got 37. So that's how that works. Eventually, you won't be able to do that anymore. Already got one. Actually, I forgot how many emeralds you get from those. That's really helpful. Platinum. Oh. <laughs> I'll fix it later. I think my loot crate 
was magnetized to me when I thought I had my elytra on and didn't. <laughs> so it probably just fell off. Now this one we can do. Can we do beef? No. Right, so we're going to have to make a spawning platform for cows. There are two things worth knowing when making a passive mob spawning area. You'll notice that I have put the biome display on my minimap. That's using a press Y that was in the keybinds. Um, it says river. Passive mobs don't spawn in a river biome. I'm glad I learned this off of Deadpine. Twitch.tv slash Deadpine, by the way. Not sponsored. Because I would have been trying to figure out why they weren't spawning. And the second thing is they will spawn in an overworld, an overground biome. So in the new versions of Minecraft, there are underground biomes, which are things like drip caves, deep caves, that sort of thing. So I'm going to go flying around a little bit now and see if I can find somewhere where it's not a river biome and then see how far down I can go before it changes biome and then build a platform there. This is a big Oh, forest. Okay, this is forest. So I'm going to go down here, or rather go down and then come over here and see if I can figure out where that starts. It would seem that just over there, under that, is forest all the way down? I guess we'll build a platform and see what happens. I think it might have to be dirt, but we'll, we'll build out with... I hope I fixed this. Pushed off the edge. <laughs> the golems that spawned. One spawned out here. One spawned there. But hopefully they'll just spawn up there now. I don't know if they can spawn anywhere else. Is that close enough? I'm not sure. We'll watch it and see. I don't think this will work, but I didn't worry about that too much because I can remove the torches and just call it a normal, you know, non-hostile mob spawning area. But we'll see. It might require dirt. That is, that seems like the first thing that might be a reasonable concern. Due to circumstances, we now need to create one of these. I thought I'd already made one, but we haven't. It's just a blast furnace, which we can probably make. I need to fix this area, don't I? I can pick one up, but let's let's make one. Uh, the Holt Forge is a way of creating the other equipment that isn't tools. And my magnet broke when I was in the raw vault trying to get some dirt. So, here we are in this situation where I now need to do something about that. Um, so let's do something about that. It's, it's our friend Steel again, isn't it? Hopefully we have enough. Nope. <laughs> Fine. Because now my shulker box is stuck down there because I can't pick it up without a magnet. I don't have a magnet. <laughs> magnet is not an option. Okay, well... We can't go into a we can't go into a vault until we've figured out cows. I guess I'll build another one. I mean, I might be able to just spawn them up here, just build a space out there. Let's try. It. <gasps> Hello. Yeah. Don't fall off. Stupid cat, don't fall off. Got a kitty now! Yay! We can keep the creepers away.
Okay, let's have a quick analysis of the changes. Um, I've removed the space where these things can spawn, as mentioned, but nothing has happened. So I'm not sure why. The second thing I could do here is to make the whole platform where they were spawning into um, a water-based kill zone that pushes them into lava, which is probably what I'll end up doing. I have replaced this with grass. I thought I was doing something wrong. It's not dirt that you need, it's grass that you need. So I went into the vault with a silk touch shovel, which was, it's, I'm so pleased for this vault enchanter because I could just put silk touch on for one, <laughs> one level and five emeralds. Cheap as chips, mate. Cheap as chips. Uh, waiting to see if anything will spawn over there. I think whilst I do... Cause I can't do a vault, right, until we've got some cows. And there's no cows in the vaults. So I might just build another couple. I'm wondering if the level at which I start getting lots of squid is going to be the level at which I'm going to get a lot of cows and stuff as well. So maybe I'll repeat this down here. I do want to make a bubble later anyway to get between different levels. So this could be a sort of stack, <laughs> stack of different... Well, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Uh, and then I need a lot more apples. What did it ask me for? 13. I found one. <laughs> I've got one so far. Do you remember when I had a stack of them and just kept eating them? Yeah, that was a mistake. So I'm growing my oak trees because obviously oak grows apples. Just, I'm going to spend more time on this world until I can do a vault, I suppose. So stay tuned. Uh, we'll see what we end up doing. Maybe I'll build this bridge. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Chickens ain't cows. There's a way of dealing with animals in Vault Hunters, which is called a jar. Animal jar. There's an empty jar. There's a scavenger item, but animal jar. It's just any glass and polished vault stone. So that's easy, isn't it? We can do glass. The way these work is they just replace a vanilla cow. Uh, vanilla pen. You pick up the chicken. And then as many chickens as you have are in the jar. And you can feed the jar and they will produce eggs and stuff. It just saves a little bit of lag from having all those entities. That's the point. You also need a an animal pen. So you can see there are four chickens. Eggs ready. Grab a bucket. Yoink. Eggs. Then you feed the that thing seeds. Seeds. This has worked <laughs> once. And now there are six chickens. And it's a minute before I can feed. Cows, please. I assume that came from this. <laughs> I that was frustrating. Let's make some chests quick. I'm not a fan of that. I'm not a fan of that at all. I might have caught something when I I just jumped off and tried to rescue everything, but then I missed the platform, so I died down there anyway. Um, but that's okay. My body will be available. What did I catch? I caught the bounty table. Does it? So we're going to have to build the other stuff. Which, oh, please don't let me be the ones that require um, steel. 
I have removed the steps. Potentially, maybe they can swim up there, but <laughs> it seems a bit much. There may be also somewhere spawnable around here, but I don't think so. Nothing spawned ever. Then again, I've always been nearby, right? So I don't actually know if something can spawn here. More chickens. <laughs> um, because I've always been so close. <sighs> Back to rebuilding. I sense an opportunity. Maybe I can capture a zombie. Did I end up with a name tag? Maybe. Maybe I can capture a zombie before it gets light. Name it. Keep it in a box. And then use it to scare the villagers later. But quick, let's get it done. Sheep. So there's sheep down here, but only chickens up there. Okay. Explain. <laughs> chickens, chickens, and sheep. So maybe it's entirely possible that another layer will spawn cows. I I don't know. Something is happening. That didn't go so well. Many things have happened today that I'm not too happy with. Other than the creeper explosion that took out some of my vault tables and stuff that I'm not going to have to recreate. I tried to bring the zombie that we uh, saved out of there and up to a little house that I built over there, but it wouldn't go in. And I tried punching him in, but of course, since I am super strong now, he just died. <laughs> the zombie didn't take any damage, uh, couldn't cope with any damage at all. So what I'm going to do is sort of hope that a zombie spawns in here. And I just learned from Tristan that you can also, instead of buying a name tag for a ridiculous amount of money, just give the zombie an item to hold. And then they won't respawn whilst they're holding it. So, uh, despawn, sorry, not respawn. So I guess now I'll be building another platform down here, waiting for night to fall several times. I don't know. It does seem to have worked. Look, there is an iron, an iron golem here. Maybe we should build this kill zone now. See how often that happens. Because it's point proven, right? It's going to work. It's just if we can speed it up with a zombie, that would be helpful. Thanks to a helpful person on the Vault Hunters official Discord, I have learned that there is a mob cap of 10. I believe that's passive mobs only. I've built a third platform underneath the sheep, but there's definitely there's almost certainly 10. I'm not even going to count them. With those ones there and these ones up here, that's going to be 10, right? So let's take our. Can let's pick it up? No. Can I do this? Yes. Oh. <laughs> Careful with that. With this, and then we put some stuff. Up. Ooh, while we're here, let's sort this out. No, I'm not allowed. It. No, let's put this here in. No. Okay. Get watched. So hopefully now those villagers can see those zombies and we'll start spawning a golem down here. Let's. Okay, a quick detour from the passive mobs. 
It needs a 3x3 three three hole. <laughs> Apparently a, just a 2x2 two two hole, but it was an odd size, so I wanted to make sure it was centralized, so I've made 3x3, three three, which has reduced the space that there is to spawn the golem, because now there's space over here to spawn the golem, so I'm going to remove all of this. Um, and I, did you notice that that zombie was holding something? I did. So that zombie should now never despawn. So in case you're not fully aware of what I'm doing there, Mobs can't spawn on half a slab. It has to be the top half of a full block to be spawnable. So if you cover everything with an oak slab so that all of these surfaces are the top half, these surfaces are in the middle of the block that they occupy. So nothing can spawn on those. And stuff can spawn on here, so I'll get rid of all this. That way, the only place for the golem to spawn is either over there or in there. <laughs> you spawned on a slab. No, you didn't. You spawned... Oh. Lost. Look at them panicking in there. Nice. They can definitely see it. The zombie, I mean. So they're panicking. They're going to spawn golems a lot. We just need to make sure that the golems can't spawn down there. Ah. That's the sound of a dying golem. And there we go. Magic. Oh, it's working. I'm so pleased. <laughs> it may be worthwhile making this not spawnable. Because they do spawn more frequently at lower levels, in theory. So, it's possibly worthwhile just not having a higher level spawning platform in the first place, as I've been building down here. In case you were wondering, because you just saw me pick up all those chickens and stuff, um, the animal that's in the jar is the first one you get. So if you want to... Uh, did you see that Superman stuff just now? The sheep, for example, you want to know what sort of wool you're going to get. It's going to be the first colour that you pick up. So it's probably best to pick up a, a white sheep first. I didn't, you can see. <laughs> this is not a white sheep in here. I forgot about that until you asked me. So, and you'll note that as you get more things in it, the thing gets bigger. I've got four sheep, I've got a chicken. You should check out our... Uh, Multiplayer streams. Those are also on YouTube, the footage. <laughs> you want to see what really happens um, when you put a lot, a lot, a lot in there. Tristan has quite the amount of chickens spawning. Crass, lewd comments from chat. I'm sure you can guess what they are. I should turn this into a bubble vator. You're right. Don't, don't let me tell you you're not right. There's no... There's nothing really stopping me at this stage. It's going to be a lot of bone meal, though, to make that many. <laughs> because every block has to be a source block. And the way to make a column of source blocks is to grow kale, which you'll have seen me doing in the sped up or, you know, edited up footage that we just saw um, of me building everything else. Also, no magnet still, so rip all of this. 44 iron just in the time that I've been recording this, which is not very long. Last few minutes. A curio, which I put a little bit of footage in about. This person stopped being a farmer. And this was all grown up. There was only one wheat in there, which is why I looked to see what he was doing. Um, there was only one wheat. Now, three. Plus the one that was already there. I think this particular farmer is still filling up their inventory, but I've also moved the... This is the design that you see on the internet. The compost is in the middle on top of the source block. I put that there. I'm wondering if... Because he was standing in the water. I'm wondering if he got stuck in the water and sort of gave up trying to find the... The, the, the tool station and then stop being a farmer because he couldn't get to his tool station. So I've put that there to stop him falling in the water. Which I assume is why actually you'll see that design everywhere else. What? Did you just jump around on it or something? Did you get overexcited? The beetroot, however, is working admirably. I don't know if they've been you know, accidentally catching some and thus trying to breed, but they can't breed, so there won't be any kids on the farm. And look, loads showing up.
in our multiplayer series, I configured the shader pack, of all things, uh... such that if I hold a spider eye, it will highlight mob spawnable blocks, hostile mob spawnable blocks, i.e. anywhere where the light level is zero. So you can see that nothing here, I came down here, there were no torches on it, so mobs spawned on this, as had many cows, which is great. Now only animals will spawn down here, which is really good. There's an enderman and a witch. Interesting how many things are spawning down here compared to upstairs anyway. Finally some cows. We've done it. The week-long quest to have a cow, man. Finally over. The apples were easy. <laughs> I should have just done that first. I didn't believe that that was correct that there was forest all the way down i should have just built this built these platforms down there we've got so many spawns it was ridiculous <laughs> get him it's done well done everybody uh so that'll do it for this episode thank you for watching i've been out just this has been out just plays this has been vault hunter's skyblock and oh who am i kidding let's do it we've got all our new gear this thing should enchant it Right? There's no reason really not to. <laughs> Apart from when we run out. Oh, crap. Emeralds. You can't take your elytra off and then fly. So the creeper that did us dirty didn't take out the vault enchanter, but it did take out the vault recycler, which requires a lot of steel. We've only got four. We haven't got any carbon to make more. So this vault is going to be important for finding carbon. That's what we really want to get out of here, because the other thing we were trying to make, what were we trying to make? The tool forge is also going to require chromatic steel. So we need a lot of that right now. Got our backpack ready. We haven't put a thing in it yet. Again, steel. We need steel for that. So we need a lot, a lot, a lot of chromatic iron. No. We need a lot, a lot, a lot of the carbon. Let's find out where it is. Carbon. Because this will tell you. This is going to be found in ornate wooden and... Okay, ornate and wooden chests. More in ornate, I think. Monoliths. Shouldn't be too hard. Did we bring a bounty? I think we still got the Larimore bounty, sure. We, we do want the monolith crate, because our boots are so dying. <laughs> we really want to replace them. If we can't find vault loot in the vault, which is likely because it only really comes from ornate and possibly gilded chests. I'm not sure about the gilded. Um, we have to get it from the forge. Break. Or we can make some in the tool in the in the forge. Um, but I don't have one of those yet. Still haven't made a soul pouch either, because I believe also needs steel or something else. that's really hard to get. I don't know. My boots are broken, have you noticed? You can see it in the right hand side of my hot bar.
That was alright. There was only one spawner, I think, in that dungeon, so it wasn't a massive challenge. The fact that I had to come in from below, though. I was saying, oh, gee, that is, I didn't even choose it. That was a good ball. That was not as much as XP as I was expecting, but we were there to, first of all, win that, and secondly, just, you know, collect... Oh, why have I got stone bricks? Collect, um, carbon. Still haven't found any ores, even though I've got a bounty to mine them, simplest ore in the game. I haven't found it. Magnet? 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 That was a magnet? It's okay. Found some Larimar, did not mind some that. This, I'll recycle it when I can. This, not a magnet, but boots. Extra damage, plus that, that's really good. And we can add a prefix to it with our artisan station. Just by using the enhancement augmenting thing. Augment the amplifying focus. So that's the bunny. So this will add a, a prefix because we have an empty prefix. Boom. We've got F4. Oh, those are amazing. Quick, put some, put some juice on. Oh, uh oh. Uh, less health. I think we could possibly re-roll this, although the implicit is worse as well. So it, it basically started off worse armor in general. I'm not sure they're very actually. We do have some leggings, don't we? Yes, we, we're replete on leggings. We don't need any more. Bears of everything except magnets. That, however, will do it. Thank you for joining me on this long and painful experience of trying to get a cow to spawn. I hope that you've enjoyed it. I hope that you'll join me next time. But I have a video to edit and a stream to run, so I can't hang around any longer. I've been Altrius. This has been Altrius Plays. This has been Vault Hunter Skyblock. I'll catch you next time. Bye.